What's going on guys? Thanks for tuning in to another video. Today we got some goodies for the IQR. Let's dig right into it. What are you doing? I'm gonna get you. Oh yeah. Now, as I said in the previous video, I wasn't all that thrilled with the uh, blue. It just wasn't, I don't know, it wasn't, wasn't hitting. But there's really no getting rid of that blue. You know, there's just no, you can't hide that whole belly pan. It's not gonna happen. So I decided just to embrace it. Let's just kind of break it up a little bit. Red and blue, do our thing. That's where we're at so far. I got a few pieces on. It's going pretty smooth. It, uh, it's just tedious. There's very little room for error. I am going to keep this even though we're, uh, we'll are we figure this out in the future, but we are going to keep that. But we're doing pretty good. I think what I'm going to do now is go to the other side. Now I think we're going to do these pieces. Making more progress, more progress. That piece was a little bit tough and this piece was a little tough too. There's some concaving. There's some little pieces like the the heat gun definitely is mandatory. It definitely came in handy. One more piece there. There's some black pieces for the top. I'm real, yeah, I'm not sure if we're gonna put those on. Let's get that front piece on, that piece on there, and we'll catch back up. We're racing the sunlight now, but we are pretty much done. I'm not super thrilled with how this turned out. I have to kind of come in here and get all these little bolts and nuts that didn't have holes. I gotta kind of cut those out with X-Acto knife and come back in with a heat gun, but from a distance, it looks solid. So the wrap so far is done. We have some black accents. There's one for here, one for here, and one for here. And then we also have a uh, back section. Debating on all of it so far. I really don't know if I want to go and put that on there or not. I like the red. I like the look. Uh, we may be able to just add our own graphics in and fill in those, those little spots. All right, we're heading back over to Tommy. Basically, Tommy sent me a few uh, photographs last night of another sled in the back of his truck. So I told him, naturally, we'll see you tomorrow. So what do you got here? 2004 Firecat F7. What were like the big things that you needed to actually do? You said something about leaking pretty good. Hard, hard to miss that one. Hard to miss that one. Might not be able to see it. Yeah, new seals. So the big thing on this is you traded this straight up for the Crossfire then, huh? Yep. Now, if you guys seen the last video, which sled would you rather have? This one or the Crossfire 800 that he had? Like there's, you know, obviously down in here, that's like the worst. It's probably road salt and all that. So down here has gotten the worst of it. And it's like that on both sides. Other than that, it's not nearly as rusty as that uh, fire or that uh, Crossfire was. There's a little bit, like it's starting to try to oxidize a bit, but the Crossfire had how many miles on it? Mm, just under four. So pretty much the same amount of miles. Pretty close. Same year too, right? 04? 07. Oh, that was a 2007 Crossfire. Okay, so 2004 Firecat, 2007 Crossfire. No, I think you made a good choice though, personally. Yep. The Crossfire was gonna end up costing you a lot of money and, and you weren't really in it for the Crossfire to begin with. You wanted an F7. Oh, the F7, but I got compulsive at Hades. Oh, is that the crack you're talking about? Nope, I found that one. Just typical Articat hoods, I think, you know, when it really boils down to it. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's because uh, Articat riders go 10 times harder. If you don't roll your sled, I mean, you, are you really riding? So as you guys know, Tommy traded that crossfire away and it went into where? I thought it was Wisconsin. Motley. Motley. It's going more and more north then. Absolutely. So the kid trades it, it, it kind of gains a few things. I wish I would have screenshotted the marketplace thing. It makes it sound really good where we know those cogs are bad. It was cracked to hell. He managed to trade that away in a matter of, I don't know, it was like literally probably 72 hours. It was under a week, right? Before oh that God. kid had that traded away. Yep. I was gonna message this guy that has the crossfire and just see what did he trade for it. And turns out that Tommy already did this. So what was the, what's the whole story on this? So thing? anyways, I seen it, messaged the guy and I was like, hey, you know, I know that crossfire. What would you happen to trade the kid for? He's like, I gave him my 09 Polaris 600, which I, that's all he said. Do you have any problems with the crossfire you noticed? Did he say anything to you like, I had mentioned it to the kid, like, yo, you gotta fix this, you gotta fix that. And he's like, oh, I can fix that in 10 seconds, so it cost me 50 bucks. Tommy bought this snowmobile for $2,400 at Heydays. They're now asking $3,700. $3,700. It is not a $3,700 snowmobile by any means. He got a little salty, got a little mad. He said he's a master mechanic, flips sled, sleds all of his life. And then all of a sudden, the next comment, before I could even respond, it was, I make more money than you and your whole family. 
Well, we got most of, well, we got all of the decals off of here. We got a couple left on the actual right here we got to get off. Again, what do you guys think you should do for color on this thing? Let us know in the comments below. All right, and I've been waiting on this one. This is what I ended up adding, and I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. We'll see if it holds up, we'll see if it lasts. Just looking at it at first glance, I don't, I don't look like that's gonna fit on here. Man, if we're swapping that out for this, this is gonna be real loud. Now I'm getting excited. Man, I gotta get a trailer for these sleds though. These can't just keep sitting out like this, that's for damn sure. 0507 IQ, 440 models. I'm gonna go grab players, pull off these springs, and see if we can make it fit. Just a real quick size comparison now that I got them out here. I wonder why it was so damn quiet when I first got it. Man, that's a big difference. Herp, what are you doing? She's in. Let's see what she sounds like. Oh, she, she's louder. There's no question about this one. You know, funny thing is, is I've tried to get numerous people into riding this here. Try to just go out, get your thousand dollar snowmobile. It don't snow in Minnesota. That's what people say. Well, it's amazing how a five day difference changes everything. Now, of course, we don't have much here. We got, you know, probably two to three inches, depending on where you're at. Probably three inches, I'd say. But it is a good wet base. And over the next three days here where I'm at in Minnesota, we are projected to get somewhere between one and 76 inches of snow. Eight gallons of 110, five gallons of 91. We got ourselves the big jug of Dominator. We got to throw some sea foam, and I figured we'd treat the gas a little bit in the Pro X as well. You know, it's awesome when you have both your sleds prepped for the winter and neither of them will start. wasn't getting enough gas that's why she wasn't popping I thought that was that was all my guess was seems like the idle might be a little high on her all right it is starting to rain not terribly but starting now the rain is not what we want to see because that will wipe out this base. So we went out and got some gas. Now let's kind of update you guys on this. So the Pro X, I went and got four and a half gallons or something like that. It was just over 15 bucks. I got eight gallons of race gas for the IQR. Came to like 73 bucks. So, and then another 45 or whatever for the Dominator, for the, for the uh, Four Quartz Dominator. She's adding up. She's gonna be a spendy one, but it's all worth it. I can already smell the race gas. I can smell that Dominator burning. It's gonna be a fun winter. Just getting home from work here. I mean, we can't put a race can on the damn snowmobile and not give you some real sound clips. I did not show you guys, well, I actually recorded it, but it didn't make it into the video, last video. This came with the snowmobile. Uh, it's the actual race jacket straight from Polaris. Also came with this spare seat. Fits pretty dang good, actually. I'm gonna do a quick tryout on these gloves here as well.
Well guys, it's no powder sled by any means, but I think we knew that, short track snow cross sled. My goodness, if she don't rip for a 440 though. In the distance you can see, she's still snowing as well. I think we probably get another inch or two out of this dang storm. This thing has been here for three days now, just dumping on us. Snow quality is pretty good. The last storm is, is a lot more powdery. That first snow got really rained on and it just kind of ended up uh, getting kind of smushed down. You can see it really stuck to the trees. Making for some good riding conditions, that's for sure. If we can keep this around, this is an amazing base to start off the winter season. With that said, guys, this is just the start of the winter. The Pro X wouldn't start. We got a carb problem with that. We got to get that cleaned again. My own damn fault, but we ain't getting into that. Not what this video is about. I appreciate the support you guys showed in the first video as well for a return video. I was kind of worried about what we were going to see for views, and it was pretty much exactly like I had never left. So thank you guys out there for supporting the channel. As always, keep her tuned for the next one.